Within 10 minutes, you will have the power to set any object on fire in Unreal Engine. To get started, add the object you would like to set ablaze to your level. I will be using this chair which I found on Pixel Bridge. Now let's open up our content browser and right click to add a Niagara system. Do an empty Niagara emitter, hit create. I'm going to call it NS for Niagara system underscore fire. Double click to open it. I'm going to add it to its own window. Now we need to rename this, so hit F2 and I'm going to call mine particles. Particle. And now we need to generate some particles, so under emitter update, go ahead and add a spawn rate. I'm going to make mine 1500. Now we need to link these particles to the object, so under particle spawn, hit the plus button and type in static and select static mesh location. These two will need to be the object that's in your scene that needs to set a blaze. So mine is a chair. So I will select the chair for both of these. Now we can see the chair shape slightly, but the particles themselves are much too big. So under initialize particles, let's go ahead and change the sprite size mode from unset to uniform and make this uniform sprite size one. Now we can see the particles forming around the chair at a much more reasonable size. And so we're going to need to add another emitter. But before we do that, go ahead and hit this plus button under particle update and type in set and find the set fluid source attributes. What this will allow is more options for when you go to add another emitter. And what we need to add is a grid 3D gas master emitter. This is where you will find the fire. So with this added to our scene, the first issue we have is that the smoke is emitting from the sphere and not our chair. So go ahead and select source and check off enable for the sphere source and go ahead and change the particle source type to emitter here. And now for right here, we need to go to what we, whatever we call this one, which is a particles. So I'm going to go here and type in people and then select this one. And now in order to have them emit, we need to make sure that this is a GPU. So under properties here, change the sim target from CPU sim to GPU compute sim. Now we're getting this little error here, so we need to make sure that the calculate downloads is set to fixed. And now we can see that the smoke is emitting from the particles of our chair, which is awesome. So now let's go ahead and go back to this grid 3D and let's go to simulation here. Let's go ahead and make the bound box lower in size. So I'm going to make it 100 by 100 by 200. And this will increase the resolution as it's, as the space used to calculate the smoke has decreased. Now one other thing is these bottom particles aren't being affected. So let's lower the bound box just slightly. I'm going to make the Z location for it 0.45. And now we can see that all the particles are emitting smoke, which is great. So I can go ahead and uncheck this draw bounds. And another way to make the smoke and fire have more quality is to increase this resolution max access here. To I'm gonna make mine 350. Be careful doing this as it can crash your scene. So now let's go ahead and add some fire. In order to do that, check on this temperature button. The density is smoke, by the way. And so now we're getting something crazy. And at this point, I like to push this to the start. And this just helps save compute time as the level will render the simulation faster than this window can. And I also like to light the fire in my actual scene and get that nice night lit fire look. And so now let's go over and add the Niagara system to our scene. I'm gonna zero it out to match the location of my chair. Now I can make this bigger and push this over. Now let's start making this fire look good. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to this set fluid source attributes and I'm gonna control this temperature. I'm gonna add a random rain float. Random rain floats are great at making the fire look more realistic as fire itself is pretty spontaneous and random. So let's go ahead and make the minimum 0 0.02 and the maximum 0 0.04. Now the radius of the flames is too large, so under radius here, add another random range float. 
and I'm going to make the minimum 0.5 and the maximum 2. And we can go ahead and check off this red river to not show the white particles if we want. And let's go ahead and make the lifetime a bit smaller because I think the waves are going to tie. So let's give it another random range of both. I'm going to make it 0.4 to 0.8. And let's control the frames even more. Under simulation here, we can use this dissipation rate temperature. And if you're running into this low quality, if you just turn the grid off and on, the quality returns, which is nice. So this dissipation rate temperature, let's increase that, and that will just dissipate the fire faster. So let's try eight. I'll make the six instead. And let's also, the smoke is really thick right now, so let's increase that quite a bit. Five. So that's a lot better. And so now let's add some more variety to the fire. So if we go to the forces here, go ahead and, hit and check on Turbulence 1 and calculate tur Turbulence. And under Turbulence game here, basically if you make this a large number, it really randomizes the fire. So I'm going to make this 150, which is slightly more subtle, but still adds some good variety to the things. Now let's hop over here to render. And this is where you'd be able to control the color of the fire. So if we go to curve, you'd be able to play with these so that you could literally make it any sort of color you wanted. Blue, pink, green, blue. <clears throat> but I want to make the fire more realistic. And I have already found a curve that I have liked for it. So my reason for picking these colors is that it's a little bit more subtle than just the black body. And I've also added some more darkers into it to kind of add some more depth to the fire. And I think the flames are still going a little bit too high. So I'm going to go back to simulation here and I'm going to increase this to eight. And I'm happy with that. So now we can go ahead and hash the fire, which will help with commute time, especially if we have a lot of fire in the So let's go ahead and add a level sequence here. I'm going to call it SQ underscore fire. And drag and drop your Niagara system fire to the level sequencer and add a Niagara component zero. And we're going to need to add a Niagara cache as well as a Niagara system life cycle track. We'll get this little error here. Go ahead and make this desired age. And I'm going to increase my timeline a bit. And then if you just hit this record button, it'll start caching the fire. And this just basically renders it out so that it's not computing the Niagara system, which takes a lot more energy than just showing what it looks like. And it's also cool because now it's compiling, which takes a couple seconds. But basically you can hit now play through your fire, but you can also pause it. So this is great if you're doing like a still frame rendering. And yeah, that's how you set any object on fire in Unreal Engine. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, I have other tutorials on my channel, like this cave god race tutorial. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.